it always surprises me how many people actually watch the huddles. Uh, yeah, because we can record. see the numbers on the website. Yeah. It's usually like 10 or 20 people. That's not bad. Once 38. I was like, what? <laughs> oh, and Elaine said, I'm, we're grouchy because we're, we're working so hard for all for everybody. Yeah, well, maybe. That doesn't usually make, make us grouchy. It's the physical labor. <laughs> no, it makes me grouchy. Yeah, that's true. What makes me grouchy is listening to hearings and listening to some of the stuff legislators say. Oh, that makes God. Me grouchy. Well, you think we'd be used to it after all these years, but no. you know, there's nothing like fresh <laughs> outrage to keep you going. <laughs> Can never get used to some of this nonsense. I know, it's just like, what, are you kidding me? I don't know. Yeah, okay, so welcome everybody. Please use the raise hand function. I mean, I know sometimes um, you gotta jump in because you have something really relevant to say and, and that's okay, but please try to use the raise hand function just because it makes it uh, more fair for everybody. We do have closed captioning if you need it. It's down under your little more uh, tab captions and you can just turn them on if you yeah. need them um yeah and use the chat to talk amongst yourself i'll try to keep an eye on it like i usually say in case there's anything that uh needs answered oh yeah jay living says listening to bill rim yeah was that with the voting well even share oh went Scherer, on, right. Scherer went on for like almost an hour again on the voting rights bill and uh but he didn't. He wasn't doing it on on Friday at ten thirty in the morning. You know, with a half hour left in the session. And telling so everybody, giving his he ran out of gas and they passed it. Yay! All right, so we're going to go over um, some things that happened this week. Actually, quite a bit happened this week. Uh, then we're going to talk about our final week strategy and. Um, Paul's going to talk about our biggest disappointment. We're saving that one for the end. <laughs> yeah, saving the bad news for the end. Get it out of the way already. <laughs> oh, I well, it's, it's probably a big discussion. So I, I yeah. don't know. The end. So we're going to run through um, what happened this week and, the, and then we'll get to it. So go ahead, Paul. Well, here's the dis uh, Jump in if you have some information. Disclosure alert. If you want to be in suspense, um, don't listen for a second. The discussion we're going to have at the end is the abysmal lack of success in all climate, things climate. Climate bills. And, yeah. um, because otherwise, the session's gone pretty well. Yeah. And, uh, but man, worse than zero. Yeah. Well, housing, yeah. housing also so far, not good. Housing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right. So but climate's a little bit bigger than housing, unless, well, unless you're without a house so we'll start with the good news <laughs> hb12 is totally dead um and that was the um energy what was it advanced website? energy technology act right however they do have 50 million dollars in hb2 and it doesn't look like we're going to get it out of there so they got the money they wanted they were talking about it today and they, and I can't remember which senator. It was in Senate Finance because they were revising HB two. The what, was is, not uh, on the agenda at all. Which was the big budget bill. I was on because I wanted to watch and see the uh, what was it that was in Senate Finance today, honey? Um, fifty three maybe SB fifty three. Well, actually, um, I'm going to correct Paul because. It was on the agenda, but it wasn't listed as a bill. It was sort of just hanging there as a separate sentence that they were going to go over HB2. Okay. So it was just weird um, the way that they threw it on there. Well, just like it was weird that um, was it Senate Finance was supposed to meet at 1.30 this afternoon. And then last night at 8.15, they said, oh, we're meeting at 9.30 instead. And that was brackish water. But then, of course, they never got to the bill. So that's why I was in Senate Finance. <laughs> and I would I would like to ask, was anybody else on Senate Finance? Somebody yes. when yes. you and I were exchanging texts, I think, right? Well, we both got on a little bit late and we weren't sure whether brackish water was heard. And there's no way to tell because they bounce around, they're not going in order. And so I, I'm pretty sure it did not hear 
brackish wa water, which would mean it would probably be near the top of the agenda for tomorrow. Yeah, so I, 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 think that's I was on the I was on the home morning and there wasn't there was no mention whatsoever for a brackish water. They, they, they had never, they they never even got never even yeah. discussed it at all. Yeah. Right, right. And then they had to go into under the floor session. OK, so yeah. HB 12 is dead. Here's all the good news is we defeated terrible things. Yeah. You know, yeah. but none of it about like passing inspirational stuff. Well, SB 520, which should have been a good bill. That was the Clean Future Act. Did any of you see that hearing? That was. Oh, my God. Yesterday. Was that? That couldn't have been yesterday. Yes. yes. It was yesterday. <laughs> that, that was surreal um, when uh, Cervantes just comes back in uh, out of nowhere and votes yes on a do pass no rec. The no, that wasn't dead. that wasn't 520. OK, here. so that's what I'm talking about. That was uh, brackish water, I think. You're right, it was. Yeah, it was 3-3. Three, three. So it, it would have been tabled. And then Cervantes just walks in, having not even been in the hearing, and goes, yes. So it became 4-3, right? So it did pass in conservation. That was and, conservation, right? And it wouldn't have passed without Liz Stefanik's also supporting it. And yeah. I have a text to her, like, we need to talk. Like, what? <laughs> w WTF, yeah. Yeah, when you've got your best people going sideways, it's like, it's not good. Okay. All right. So, so that that was the. the I was uh, jumping to five twenty SB five twenty Clean Future Act. That was yesterday. That was yesterday, and uh, that died. Yeah. And that was great. Um, but there were a lot of environmental groups in favor of that bill, including Sierra Club, with Camilla being the first to speak. Because again, like with the Energy Transition Act, it's like, well, this is better than nothing. You know, it's a start. It's going to get us going. But as you all know, if you read the alerts and you read Paul's blog, um, it was in dire need of some important amendments. And one was made. I think they got rid of what carbon capture or carbon. Right. Uh, offsets, <laughs> but they didn't make the others. So it's good that it died, but it's just unfortunate that we can't get a good um, bill to cut to cover these areas. So I'm so tempted to launch into what I want to talk about at the end, but I'm going to hold it. So I was going to say, yeah, we'll talk about bill. that later. Okay. Um, the omnibus tax bill is looking very solid. Nobody's futzed with it at all, and uh, and it's is rich. On? Yeah, there he is. Rich. Yeah. Is that your perception that it hasn't been mess messed with? It wasn't messed with when it passed out of the committee. And my understanding from Paige Knight of Voices is that it was supposed to be heard in the, on the House floor today. So straight from the Taxation and Revenue Committee to the House floor. And I don't know if there's going to be any amendments on the House floor, but I Heard your message loud and clear, and I hope they did too. You know, let's yeah, just... I hope people are going. That's one thing where we still need to make calls because in Senate and 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 to write because in both business and tax and trans tax business and transportation, but especially in finance, they really butts with stuff. Um, it was interesting because I hadn't watched a finance committee hearing until today. And um, the other news from that committee is Munoz is not interested in adding any money back into a bill. If it's if it arrives there without money, it's not getting funded. If the money isn't already in the budget, right? Forget it. So so that, that killed the two um, health care acts. Uh, I haven't heard from before Mary we go yet. to that. Let's see. Janet's got her hand up. <laughs> go ahead, Janet. I, I just want to say that I called too, but I don't know uh, if it was timely. But I got a hold of at least five senators on uh, HB 547 and kind of summarized what you said and picked out a few points. So, um, so what I'm hearing is that it did pass. What? Uh, which one? Five. Which one are you talking um, about? The omnibus bill. It's it's moving along. Four fifty seven. So, yeah. It's what was it, Rich? It's going it to the is. House floor. Oh, I may have. Yeah, five five forty seven. Five forty seven. Okay. Sorry, I, that was. It's one of the dummy one. bills, you know, public health, safety, and everything Sorry. good in the world. I have a hard enough time okay. keeping track of this shit without yeah, you're, so, you're mistyping. Yeah. 
Thank you. So, um, uh, yeah, we're going to be sending out uh, a, an alert sometime soon to uh, give you some action on some of these bills that are moving along but may need a little um, a little boost. So that that omnibus tax bill HB five forty seven will be one of them. Yep, okay. Will. What else, Paul? Um, uh, we HB four thirty one is not officially dead. That's but... local government utility service restrictions. That was sort of like the anti local cho choice energy bill. And even though local choice energy is not likely to move, um, that bill was still a terrible bill. And uh, well, Gail, Gail Facey wrote to me today and said she was going to make sure it didn't get out of her committee. So which one? That's probably House Judiciary. Is that what? Wait, are you talking about 431? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's No, it's currently in government election and Indian affairs. Oh, and that's what she's on now. She used to chair um, right. yeah. House Judiciary. But now that she's got a leadership job, she doesn't chair it anymore. Okay. But anyway. Um, anything... She's on House Judiciary, though. She is? She's right. She can vote against it twice if necessary. Uh -huh. sure. And it so, sounds like she's willing to do that. And uh, so the, the, the bad news I've gotten, at least from watching Senate Finance today, is that it's very unlikely that either HB 293 or HB 264, those, those are, the... are the two um, Health Security Act bills in terms of continuing the design process, it looks like not, neither of them are going to make it. So those- Will are, they get junior money again or what? No, they, did, they nope. didn't go after junior money. I don't know oh, why. They didn't. But this is one thing that we, we should talk about. And it's like, what do we do when our allies do things that, you know, even trusted allies that don't really make, seem to not make sense. They like, they miss something. Well, I, I think we have to give them the benefit of the doubt and maybe we don't, of the doubt and maybe we don't, know exactly what went wrong there, but it is worth having a conversation in some of these cases because it just seems like the, the failures keep happening year after year. The same kind of failure, just not getting through the interim hearings with some money in your bill approved so that then when you go to House Appropriations or Senate Finance, it's no problem unless they hate the bill completely and then they kill it for that reason. Yeah, it's but, a shame that it just gets killed because you didn't manage to get your money put in the budget. And I don't want to minimize how hard that is because I, I don't know what's going to happen in the next session. But in the last session, Hattie was still in charge of the Legislative Finance Committee. And so she's not in charge of House Appropriations and Finance, and she almost certainly will not be in charge of. So you're talking about the interim. Yeah. In the interim hearings, she, you still have to get her you know, willingness to hear your bill and to approve it. And she runs like a, a, t a tight ship, I got to say. Wouldn't you think, though, that because she's no longer head of House Appropriations and Finance, that she wouldn't be head of <clears throat> legislative finance? One would hope, but she was this summer because she ha hadn't right. lost her position right. yet. Of course. But, you know, it'll be fun to watch her lose yet another position of power. Um, <laughs> So those are the, the the updates on the bills I was tracking. Okay. Roxanne's going to talk few. about a few. Uh, there was one other one that um, is down on yours, and I'm just going to take it. SB 337, the Water Security Planning Act, which was the top water bill from the middle Rio Grande water advocates, was on the Senate floor today, and it passed on party lines. So it's still got to go to the House. It's got to so. go to the House. But we're hoping it can get through in the next 10 days. We really only have about 10 days left. Yeah. Um, okay, SB1, uh, the Regional Water System Resiliency Act passed the House on Monday. But because the House, and it passed the Senate previously, uh, obviously, but um, changes were made. So it has to go to what they call concurrence. And I think a lot of you know. So after the House has voted, or after the Senate has voted, if they made changes that the other chamber has already voted on, then it, they have to go to concurrence and uh, the other chamber has, has to agree to the changes that were made after they had voted. So that's gonna happen with that one. We hope there won't be any big issues. 
SB 19, the Law Enforcement and Public Safety Telecom. I don't know, that's kind of going through a wild ride. I don't know if Cindy, Cindy Paps, are you on tonight? I didn't see her on there. Um, it's- It sounds like what they're doing is trying to merge- They're merging- Pope's bill. Yeah. Harold Pope's bill in with, yeah. Oh, Marty, do you know, can you tell us a little bit about um, that? Well, I think it was on today and it was on as a no comment. So they completely screwed up on Friday. Right. Um, right. They didn't get there. The Senate didn't, you know, put whatever, adjourn until late. They didn't get there until something like five. And they decided to take bills out of order. They took a bunch of bills. And they had a whole hall full of law enforcement people waiting to testify for it. And yes, they are trying to merge, they are trying to help Harold Pope save face because the bill that he has on use of force is considered totally impossible by pretty much everybody because it is so specific about what law enforcement can and can't do that it, it can't work according to them. So um, they're still they were still trying, but what they were supposed to have done today is to have heard it and essentially passed it um, without comment because they allowed ten minutes at the end of Friday for the assembled uh, testifiers to um, to say something. So they consider that they have had their public comment. So it may have passed. And uh, if it did, uh, let me check with, you know, with emails because Rachel will have sent us. Yeah, Rachel, I've, I've been checking in with Rachel. That's Rachel Feldman. She's part of SOS Indivisible Santa Fe. And she was really instrumental in bringing people together to create this bill. And she said the next big action would be for people to, when it goes to the Senate floor, which it, should do now, I think it goes yeah, to the same I floor. think so too. Yeah. Um, so we'll put a, an alert out about that to just write to your own senator and ask them to please um, pass SB 19. And depending on how long it sits there, we'll be asking people to write to Senator Worth, regardless of whether he's your senator, and ask him to calendar it. Because one of the things we've got to get better on is this thing of where we have bills sitting in a committee for two weeks or three weeks and, and we don't take action. You know? Yeah, right. yeah. Can, can somebody it. explain what the temporary calendar is versus some other kind of calendar? Because some of our bills are on the temporary calendar in the house. What they is have that? to be, my understanding is they have to be read, it's like a formality, three times. And oh, that, oh, yeah. It moves to these stages, and only after the third reading does it go get to the point where it can then be discussed and voted on. Is that constitutional? Um, maybe. It, it's, or is it rule? Because it's insane. I sat through one thing where they were going through all the memorials. It took them three hours to go through all the memorials yeah, I know. on the third each time. I mean, it's it, crazy. It, it is in the Constitution. Yeah, I, it seems kind of ar archaic. I figured it probably was. So, yeah. So that's that's the answer to that. And oh, and my, thank you, Michael. Michael says that the Senate has concurred on SB one, so that's a done deal. That passed. Yay. Yay! So that's good. We gotta we gotta um, note um, the victories. Okay. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the legislative legislative changes and legislative salaries. HJR2 is, has been on the House calendar for a week or so. It has not, as far as I know, unless it happened today, it's still sitting there. Um, HJR8. No, uh, I think they both passed that committee today. Well, you it's mean- not, It's on the floor. Yeah, yeah, on the floor. It's on the House oh, floor. Right. HJR8 is. HJR8 passed because that um, was in, uh, is in Senate rules. So it passed uh, the floor. Oh, oh it did. It oh, passed good. the House floor. Yes, HJR eight, which is legislative salaries, because now it's in Senate rules. The HJR two, which is the session length. Eight, no, HJR two is yeah, is the one about uh, length. It's making the even-year sessions sixty days. 
Then there's that HDR 14 that's floating around. That's the one that makes both sessions 45 days, which makes no sense. So we're ignoring that one. I'm hoping that one doesn't go through because it's that really- That died funny. in judiciary the other day. It did? Oh, good. HDR 14 it. did? Okay, great. Yes. Great, thank you, Michael. Um, and the more good news, HB7, the Reproductive and Gender Affirming Healthcare. Wait, you skipped good news. Oh, voting rights. That yeah, passed. both. HB4 passed on the Senate floor today. Yep. So I think that, does that have to go to concurrence? Probably. Yes, it definitely changes, does. I changes were made. So, so let's hope that that um, happens. And then uh, same thing with HB7, that's the Reproductive and Gender Affirming Healthcare passed the Senate floor 23 to 15 yesterday, probably last night. And now that has also has to go to back to house concurrence. So both of those, those are big, important bills. So uh, we're hoping there won't, won't be any issues with the concurrence. Um, SB 11, paid family and medical leave. I don't know. It's in house commerce and economic development. Uh, it's already passed through the Senate. There's still a chance um, it could get through got two house committees and house floor but we've got 10 days so i'm really hoping and I, you know rich you'll be interested in this i spoke with chris chandler two days ago and she said that in terms of minimum wage bill that she's largely given up and is focusing on paid family leave and if you want to figure she wasn't going to share with me the names of the democrats but she goes you can do the math just look at the committee i don't have the votes Republicans will vote against it, and I don't have enough Democrats to support me. For so, minimum wage, you mean? For minimum wage, but that family. could be what's holding. How long has it been in, uh, how long has family and medical leave been there? Family, oh, uh, in House Commerce and Economic, economic Development. Health. I don't know. Okay, I got my, the reason I'm looking over to the side is because I have my my laptop on to look things Sonia, up. Sonia, did you have this. something you were going to add? That the paid family leave was only put into one committee and then it'll go to the floor, the house floor. Oh, okay. I see that. Yeah. Okay. That's mm -hmm. great. And that, well, that went to only uh, yesterday. It went commerce, and commerce and economic development. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it looks like it, that one could make yeah. it. That would be. Yes, um, it does. It looks very good. The room and, That'd be um, great. Paul was talking to you. So oh. He said to tell you that um, Chris Chandler's given up on the minimum wage. Okay. Okay. So um, water security planning, uh, SB 337, that was the top uh, priority water bill based on Mill Rio Grande water advocates and um, And that passed today. It passed on the Senate floor, but it's still going to go through the house. So we're hoping that that will happen. And then SB 53, storage of certain radioactive waste. Oh, I listened still. to House Judiciary for so long. No, it's on the Senate floor. That, oh, no, I'm sorry. No, it's it's House Judiciary today. I'm right. sorry. Then and it I goes to the Senate I listened to it all floor. day and they still never got to it. So it'll probably be the first on the agenda next time. They had two gun bills and listen to the Republicans talk about why it was this horrible thing to prevent guns at polling places was just surreal. They could be located next to a business. And what if, you know, the person has a gun and goes to the business? Are they too close to the polling station and they'll get arrested? Or if they're driving through the parking lot in their car with a gun, could they be arrested and charged with a felony? And it's like we, one we want to intimidate end. people from voting is what we want. To right, do. right, right. So the intent is obviously not to bust people in parking lots unless they're standing outside the, the polling place with an automatic rifle. Yeah. And Elaine, I know you're asking about the Green Amendment. We are going to talk about that when we get to the section on climate bills. You know, regarding the uh, polling places bill, when I called, um, I told them that I worked in the as an election worker last year. Um, at, at the Grant County Elections Office. And there were some tense moments where I was concerned um, and no one brandished any guns, but there were some tense moments and the county clerk handled it well. But I said, personally, you know, I, I would feel much more assured if they passed this bill. So 
I just left that message at several offices, but yeah. yeah. You know, it, for any of you who are not gun owners like myself, um, being around somebody who's mad and who has a gun is very uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, last year when the, they had the big protest that surrounded the roundhouse, might have been the year before, yeah. um, I had to walk through and a guy stopped me who was with the protest and he goes, and he said something. That I said, this is making me very uncomfortable. And he goes, what do you think? We're going to shoot you? And I go, I have no idea, but I'm not, I'm not comfortable around guns. I've never been around a gun in my life. And he just laughed at me. And, um, and I just don't think gun owners get it, that, that just standing there with an automatic rifle to somebody who's just trying to walk past you is very uncomfortable. Well, it's not like your average gun owner. It's the fanatical Second Amendment gun owner folks that are the ones who show up there. And I don't want to be on the evening news. You know, Paul Gibson, when entering the roundhouse, was filled with... Love. Well, and when that was happening a couple of years ago, we got a lot of nasty, really nasty comments coming, coming through on the blog. And on our Facebook page, and it was just like, oh my God, who are these people? I mean, we had to eventually just um, stop responding and blocking the comments, and and you know, not approving them because it, they were just really nasty. Um, okay, so we we talked a little bit about uh, that's our list of basically stuff that happened this week. Um, do you want to say anything more about when you got a bill and it requires funding? You got to get the money in the budget. Uh, or if it requires cooperation with a, a, a government a department, department. That, that's like with public bank, they had to have somebody from uh, finance authority or economic development, somebody who would say, yes, we want, want to receive this money and work with them. Yeah. Their allocation. Yes. And same with the Health Security Act. Yeah, Jeff, you've got your hand up. Yeah, uh, going back to the, the health security or the health related, the two health related bills, my understanding is that the, um, because of what happened last year, uh, if there was any junior money from certain legislators that the governor would, would simply kill that um, decision. And so um, that was not a avenue. And I'm curious, these, as I recall, these two bills, it was very modest amounts of money. Yes. Uh, maybe 250, maybe 350,000 each or something or other. And I'm curious. Between the two. I'm yeah. sorry, how much? 460,000 between the two. Okay. One was 260, yeah. one was 200. Yeah, which is incredibly modest amount. Was, was there any, any feedback regarding why they didn't move at all and, and rationale for such a small amount, particularly since there was a historical effort the year before to try to move forward, you know, with design phase. Right, right. I don't know. I don't really know the answer to that. We can, we can um, talk to Mary and try to get some information. But, you know, part yeah. of it was, I think that, I think it's possible that, that it didn't make any traction because, you know, committee chairs, if they look at a bill and see that it's, it's not in the budget, and they're looking at a three hour discussion for a bill that's not going to get anywhere. They just say, I mean, that's what uh, Matthew McQueen has told me in, in his energy and environment community, that if he knows the bill's not going anywhere, he's not wasting time. Well, so, then that sort of ensures it doesn't go anywhere. Right, right. right. Yeah. yeah, we'll try so, to get so, some information hmm. about what happened with that. Yeah. So how does I'm sorry how does it get in the budget then before the hearing how how does the 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 Cadillac version of how you do that is you go to let's say it's a health bill you go to the health and human services interim committee you present the bill they like it they pass it they they recommend it then you go to the legislative finance committee and you you present the bill and this if is... they embrace it and put it in then they put it in the house. This budget. is all in the interim. This is all in the interim mm -hmm. hearings. Okay. And so I don't know if if Lundstrom is as impossible uh, with the legislative finance committee as she is with uh, House Appropriations and Finance, or was with House Appropriations and Finance. 
So it might have been that Mary went wrong. I, I, I'm pretty sure Mary actually tried to get on the uh, Legislative Finance We're talking Council, about Mary Feldblum, who's um, the, uh, the agenda and, and was unsuccessful. And so if you, th that's just mm. Patty's way of saying, no, 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 I get a lot of insurance money. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So uh, can I do a quick follow up on that? I, mean, I heard that HB 400, which is that state managed health care uh, analysis for Medi Medicare, I think. I heard that passed the floor 59 to 10. So I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, that's obviously not the health security study, but it's some kind of analysis. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know where it's gone from there, but I heard it did pass the house. And that's HB 400. Okay, yeah. I'll look into that. Yeah, we don't know that bill. There is a bill about Medicaid in the budget, and then there's also about a Medicaid expansion. And yeah. Medicaid. That's, that's what that's what HB four hundred. Medicaid. Yeah. Is that Medicaid yes. forward? Yes. Yes. It's Medicaid yes. forward. Yes. That's Medicaid yes. forward. It has it has no money attached to it. The money is already in the budget. Um, so that's why they're fairly optimistic it's going to go through because it doesn't have, it's, as you were talking about, the money is already in the budget. Okay. Or, that's good. Yeah. Is that, you had your hand up. Is that what you were going to no, say? Or do you right, know? right. That oh, was about okay. Medicaid forward. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I was just about to call on you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great. So, uh, <laughs> we mentioned this earlier, but you know, we have roughly 10 days. So we're going to go through all the bills tomorrow morning and look at what really still might have a chance with a little push, realistically. Um, <clears throat> and then we'll let you know via the alert and you'll, you'll probably yeah, we'll, blog. Yeah, we'll probably be tag team. Blog it about sure. it. Um, this, and there's probably a handful of bills, maybe half a dozen at most, I would guess, that could use a little a little push. And so what we'll undoubtedly be asking is for people to write to the committee chairs and say, please get this bill on the agenda because, and we'll be, provide as much as we can for speaking points. Um, and uh, because that's going to be one of the big pushes. And then the other will be any time a bill that, you know, unless it's a bill that has passed every committee um, unanimously or near unanimously, and it gets to the final floor chamber, um, we may not alert people because it's torture to sit and listen for three or four hours and then get to the bill and then have it, you know, dispensed within a, in two minutes or something. Yeah, some of these bills are, are really obviously going to get through no matter what we do. So uh, we, we won't um, be taking any action on those. Yeah, Tyler, you have your hand up. You had mentioned um, that it, at least I interpreted what you said, Paul, as there's really no way for the health security bills to now get funding through junior bill. Is, is that an absolute closed door? Oh, yeah. The junior bill money was closed a while ago, the deadline. Um, Probably they, like a month ago. A month. It's, it's usually the middle of the session. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in Mary's defense, I told her what Peter Worth told me. And Peter Worth told me that First, he said, I don't think there's even going to be junior money, but if there is, and, and anybody puts anything like a study or a design in it, the governor will veto it. And I told Mary that, so she probably was, wasn't all that motivated about trying to get junior money. Yeah. Well, since, since those two oh. bills are not going to pass, um, the HB 400 is actually quite a, um, impressive bill i'm not i'm not sure it's a great <laughs> approach but it's it's certainly better than nothing to ex by expanding medicaid um to a lot of people in the state um no that's I'm... okay we'll we'll take a look at that and um see if there's anything we can do uh to help okay. get that one too is that rena sapansky's bill yes okay. and i think it's the governor who's behind the proposal for that yes it's amazing okay. how easy it is if you've got the governor behind it. Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. Rich, did you have a comment? Uh, yeah, on your point about contacting the committee chairs to get bills off the dime. Um, the other day in uh, the housing group that I've been participating in for quite some time, uh, 
it was suggested, like especially for the Senate uh, Judiciary Committee, where the housing chair, where the, that chair is uh, uh, Cervantes, that emailing everybody on the committee to try to put pressure on Cervantes. Now, I don't know. Is that? I'm just wondering. Is that, well, does that ever? Was that ever work? There are committee chairs, and then there's Cervantes. <laughs> yeah. And, right. And you know, I'm actually starting to develop a fondness for the guy in a relationship. Um, we're not dating, don't worry. Um, but um, uh, he he does not respond to a lot of pressure. So um, in our communication with him, it's been, gosh, we really appreciate what you did in that committee was amazing. Um, is there any chance you might be able to squeeze such and such onto the agenda for your bill? For your uh, a hearing soon and why you want that. And so you have to, I mean, you know, they're under immense pressure. They have way more bills than they can possibly see. And, and, um, and so you have to have a little bit of um, empathy for them when you uh, press them on that because they can get bristly. And you need to know what amazing work they've done. I don't know anything amazing that Cervantes has done to you. Oh, well, then you didn't <laughs> see the hearing on. Uh, um, but was it 520? No. Bracket. Yeah, no, it was 520. 520, yeah. That Clean he, future. He said it was like right, a Hallmark card or something. Right. And he had some really good quotes on, on that one. You, know, there, you should it read had no today's tea. blog. If you didn't read today's blog. Yeah, Michael said, really we're making tea. laws here, not Hallmark cards. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I think um, in this case, he was he was right. The bill needed a ton of work. Well, and now we're into the, the part of the conversation I wanted to talk about. Did you have something else to say, Rich? Or... No, no. Okay, thanks. So the, the, the inability for us to get any climate bills through, and um, it was really brought out in bold relief in the hearing on 520. Um, the bill was, is all aspiration. That's you know? SB 520 Clean Future Act. Yeah. And it was brought by conservation voters of New Mexico without any dialogue with anybody. And it was introduced in one of those dummy bills. So nobody knew what it was. It was a public peace and freedom safety. or what safety or whatever. And, um, you know, it's just it's not easy to investigate those bills, because if if there's no community community committee substitute, then the bill is still empty. Um, yeah, but, they got to get rid of that process. And it know. doesn't make any sense to have a deadline for when you can submit bills and then create these dummy bills so you can submit them anytime you want. You submit them late and then they don't really say what they are. You got to dig around to figure it out. Yeah. So anyway, in that committee hearing, um, basically Cervantes' main point was this bill is like a memorial. It has all these aspirational statements about we're going to do this, 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 and this. And then he goes, and then if we don't do it, nothing. There's nothing in the bill about how you're going what to hold happen. people, how yeah. we're holding ourselves accountable to this. And without it, it's a meaningless bill. It's pointless. And it, it may sound real nice and it may make you feel good when you pass it, but it isn't going to get anything done. And he even said, and I don't even understand why gas and oil and ag and ag lobbyists here, even here, because this is your free pass. You know, if this bill passes, you've got nothing to worry about. They, yeah. You can do whatever you want. Well, and he said something similar um, about local choice energy too. And it turned out that the uh, supporters of that, people who were responsible for getting that bill in there, wound up agreeing with them. And like Marielle Nanasi, who was on last week, said she sat with them for a couple of hours and the bill is so much better now. But you know they just they just ran out of time. So he does have some skill in that way. And you probably wanted to say something more, but um, Jay's hand is up too. So go ahead, Jay. Go ahead, Jay. Well, you know I've heard Cervantes opine for years on what's wrong with this bill, and what's wrong with that bill, and sometimes he actually tries to make it better. But nobody seems to give a shit that let a legislative the council service isn't putting together good bills. I mean, I don't get it either. Right. I mean, they could do something about that. They could get them more training. They could get some more people so they could do better work. And I know they do hard work, but, you know, they need to do better work. And well, this wasn't a case. I mean, a lot of times what what uh, 
Cervantes is railing about is the language, and that is on le legislative council services generally. Here, he wasn't talking about language. He was just talking about you don't have elements of the bill that would make it a law. You know, it, make it. Yeah, I understand, you know, but I mean that's also here's yeah. a standard. Yeah. If you break it, this will happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead, Jay. Go ahead, Jay. Right, but I mean, that's also could be, you know, that th these are comments that could have been heard earlier and made it better, but nobody bothers to do that. And if, like, unless they start doing something with legislative, legislative council service, right? That's what they're called, the LCS. Unless they yes. start doing about that, I don't, I don't buy into their commentary on it. I just don't buy it. Until they start to do something about it, then they're just sitting there and saying, yeah, I know it's wrong and I'm happy about it because I get to sit here and complain about it and not pass the bill. So mm -hmm. I blame them. Not not anybody else. I blame them for letting it continue to happen. Well, yeah. with well, all so due respect, Jay, this had nothing to do with poorly drafted by legislation. Okay, so that was the one time. Fine. But I it does you. happen a lot. You're right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I remember Didn't the that happened to you, Angela. Thing. Go ahead. Sorry. Didn't that happen to you, Angela? One of the years. And when we jumped in with the sponsors to make corrections in the language and uh, tighten it up. We had a little bit of resistance, well, moderate resistance from the staff person doing the writing. And uh, the last time, last CS session when we had a bill, we we this stuck is to about our guns. public banking. In case people don't know, public banking yeah. bill. Yeah, yeah, we stuck to our guns, and we uh, had sharper language in the bill. And um, and I would do that again. Uh, and just insist with the um, with the writers that that we're going to keep it tight. Supposedly they have legal backgrounds, and that's what they're aiming for in their writing. But not all of them function at that same level. Right, it's mm -hmm. our experience, at least. So, and, and Jay was completely right about about the the other comment he made about they should have had this surfaced earlier, so people could have had comment on it and fixed it. But CVNN dropped it late in the session and in a dummy bill format with no input from anybody probably other than Sierra Club. The Sierra Club was there speaking in support. But, um, you know, that is just not how you're going to get any kind of bills through. And so what I what I said in the blog today is that, you know, it's time for us to draft a climate bill without trying to placate gas and oil because that's what cvnm did and mimi stewart in the hearing when she was just getting reamed by cervantes said you don't understand we had all the people in the room and we couldn't achieve agreement on any of the consequences or penalties and so we left it out and it's like <laughs> wait a minute you mean it's like going to a bunch of felons and saying you know we want to increase time in prison for felons who commit A, B, and C, and then the felons object, and you go, "Oh, well, I guess we can't do that." But that's felons... exactly what's been happening on the housing bills. The Democrats are voting to table, it and they're saying, "Well, you, you you're introducing this, and you haven't gotten an agreement from you know your partners, which means your adversaries, and so we we don't even want to consider it." And and you're not going to get agreement from these people. Well, and one nonsense. of the primary reasons they do it is because of campaign contributions, right? I mean, I think that's part of it, at least. You know, Maybe, a lot yeah. of people are getting a lot of money from the insurance industry, from oil and gas, from, you know, who knows, who knows what. But I don't know. Yeah, it's very, it's frustrating, to say the least. So we're looking for some ideas. One idea we have is that next session and i've already surfaced it with joseph cervantes we work with him and some environmental groups that are real environmental groups not foe of environmental groups we don't invite the frigging gas and oil people to the table and we craft a climate bill that you know sets emission standards and sets penalties for failure to and meet a timeline. Our, and a timeline and so forth and then let them, because what, what uh, Mimi said was, if I had done that, this room would have been so packed with Namoga people, you wouldn't have been able to move. So? And, I, and my reaction to that was, so what? You yeah. Know? 
Let him let him whine. So at least if we did that, but one of the realizations I had was that Stuart's in a bad space. If she had put together the perfect climate bill and somehow managed to get it through, the governor would have vetoed it. Right. And the thing is, the governor campaigns on climate, but she doesn't want to do anything to gas and oil. And so I, I think that the unspoken rule is that don't send me a bill that I'm going to have to veto on climate. You know, I don't want because she doesn't want to veto it, but she doesn't want to sign it either. And so Stewart's being the good sto soldier that she is, you know, is um, advancing a bill that maybe she'd sign because there's nothing in it. It's a yeah. fake. It's a fake climate bill. I and then she can say, "Look, we got the we got now. We've got this the nation's best climate bill too, you know." And and it's like Cervantes went off on the Energy Transition Act in the same way. He goes, "You've got all these RPS standards, but where's the enforcement? There's none. So if we don't achieve these goals, what happens? Nothing." So okay. Cervantes actually said to Paul, "What was it yesterday? That he'd be willing to work with them on." a solid climate bill, but we'll who see. knows? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. So anyway, that's one thing we've got to do. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. Does anybody else have other ideas? I mean, is it one thing I thought we might learn from people like the gun violence people or um, the reproductive rights people, they seem to have managed controversial bills and gotten them through. Well, and Angela's pointing out in chat that it's the same thing that's happening with the public bank because they're compromising with um, community banks. And, you know, the bankers are in the top four groups that make campaign contributions. Ugh. So, you know, I mean, is it is it just simply that they've bought and sold the legislature and we have no hope? Well, and Maria's saying, who cares if she has to veto it? She's already on her second term. She's not she yeah, going to run again. She, she doesn't yeah. want to look bad. She's got aspirations, I think. Yes, she does. She doesn't, it's going to make her look bad if she has to do that. But I don't know. Any? That's my point. I mean, that I don't care. Who cares? We're not here to make sure that she can go up to the next top political. We're, that's not our, we've got to get her, you know, hey, if she has to veto, she has to veto. Too bad oh, for her. Yeah. We and have no issue with will. that. But she that, probably will. The, the problem with it for uh, uh, Senator um, Stewart is that if you do that, you are in her doghouse big time and you don't want to be in her doghouse because she never forgets. And so, you know, I, I'm pretty sure there's an unspoken rule. Do not bring me something I need to be Do not cross me. Yeah. Tyler, you've got your hand up and then Jay. Well, um, to the more narrow question of working with Cervantes, um, I saw how sleazy he was in dealing with health security a few years ago when his vote was critical and a committee <laughs> slipped out and met with a lobbyist from the hospital and health insurance companies. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, I've watched that happen. And I just, you know, far better than I do, but he just seems so unreliable and slippery. Is he sucking you into something that he knows yeah, he can? I, I wouldn't trust him. <laughs> I don't know. He, and who knows, he could say that. And then when Paul goes back to him some months later, he'd be like, I don't, I don't remember saying that. I mean, I could see him doing that. Yeah. We're, and we're not <laughs> saying we are going to work with him, but. And it's not necessary. Yeah, right. It's not necessary that we're here with him. <laughs> The idea is that we draft a bill well in advance that is, you know, just exactly what we want, and we take it to the interim hearings, hearings and we use it to educate legislators and to expose Namoga and them for their stupidity, and, and we ultimately take it to the legislature, and at, at the worst case, if we can't get it through, we know who our allies are and we know who our allies aren't. And um, that's worth knowing. But, um, you know, if it was an education bill, and I'm, I'm a former teacher, so I'm, you know, I just don't think it rises to the level of importance and urgency education does as climate, because we're going to, I mean, this is getting... Nothing's going to matter. Nothing's going to matter in 20 or 30 years um, if we're not, if we don't do something. Yeah. Jay. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I'm just okay. saying... 
careful right. with Cervantes. Oh yeah, Throw we with we, your eyes open. We would be very yeah. careful. Sure. Tyler, Jay. Yeah, no, I like this talk, Paul. I mean, I think that there has to be some way to educate these people in our legislature who are supposed to be passing bills for the benefit of all New Mexicans. There has to be some way to educate these people because they seem to be pretty damn uneducated about too many things. And, and I totally get the part where like these people are giving up their time, getting barely any cash to, just, to pay, just to pay their way to sit there and be in committee. And they have no staff. We all know all these things, but that can't be an excuse. It's a situation, but it can't be an excuse for doing nothing on climate. And I've been trying to understand a little more about what's happening in, you know, for temperatures. And there's some, there's some maps that show the temperatures of what's gonna be in here just in the 40s and 50s in, in, in New Mexico. And like the bottom quarter of the state will be uninhabitable as will El Paso and Phoenix and, Arizona, and parts of Arizona. That's not, like, that's not far away. You know, that's really soon. And yeah. these people are still doing nothing. Like we have time. And I think we all know, like, we don't have time on climate. The time is passing us by. And, like, there's this discussion about how, like, all the tipping points, there could be just a domino effect of tipping points. And that's one of the new theories. Yeah. I, one of the Republicans the other day in one of these hearings said, oh, well, you know, if we don't let that happen here, it'll just happen in Texas. And the air from Texas blows over New Mexico, you know. <laughs> so just... that's an excuse to do nothing, right? Right, exactly, exactly. Right, so like, yeah, I mean, so, and that's the one, the, one of the hardest parts about this is like, we have to do all our work to save their children's lives. Yeah. Well, even know, as it's... they do nothing, but we don't have a choice. Right. But well, we need to if... find a way to, to really get these folks to understand. And like us in Northern New Mexico is like one of, the, one of the few spots in New Mexico that actually looks like it will be survivable in 20 to 30 years. But like the rest of Southern New Mexico won't be. Yep. I mean, just, yep. these maps are all, the maps are crazy. Sorry, it's I'll, I'll crazy. stop there. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll just say really quickly, and then I see your hand up, Elaine and, and Jeff, that pa Paul and I have been toying with the idea of not even doing this um, legislative session work anymore, but just focusing, um, and, and we don't know if we're going to do this, on research and creating materials to educate legislators, you know? that maybe that would be a more effective way of getting things done than the craziness of the session, because there's only so much that, that people are gonna be influenced by if they don't have good information. So we started doing that a few years ago, right? Well, we do do some of that, but I mean, really focusing on that. Like this year, we didn't have much time to do research at all. We didn't have a research team. I mean, we just didn't, um, pull it together as well as we have in the past. And, but every year we just see how important it is or how unfortunate it is that so many legislators just really don't understand the issues and the only information they're getting are from industry lobbyists. So there has to be a counter um, to that. And, and what we need are really, I mean, you know, when you think about it, name the number of legislators that are really strident advocates, you know, Sadia Lopez, uh, yeah. Patricia Breva Caballero. Ca Caballero, who's largely ignored in the legislature, yeah. but Antoinette isn't. Uh, Carrie and Hamblin seems to be pretty good. Though. Pretty good most of the time. But I mean, what you find is one time after another, um, you're, you think you've got it solid because you've got these Dems in there. And then they say the same damn thing that the lobbyists are saying, and they vote yep. the wrong way. And so it's hard to tell. You think you've got your ducks in a row. And then Liz Stefanik, one of the most reliable legislators we know, goes and votes and casts the deciding vote to get the brackish water through. I just, my jaw dropped. Yeah. So let's, let's, um, Elaine, go ahead. Yes, hi. Um, first, I want to comment that New Mexico Legislative Reports is a subscription, and that subscription service basically goes through bills and gives pros and cons, and it is basically um, all the lobbyists subscribe to it. And so all the, all the analysis on the bills are done and then that's what these lobbyists go for, go to the um, uh, the um, legislators with. 
So that has to be done on um, on uh, for more progressive um, yes. side. What, what was the? I, I agree with that. I just want to say on the climate issue, I agree. We need to build. We need to do one that we want. We need to move it forward, and I agree with Paul on that. I live in a wildfire prone area, 93 percentile on the West Mesa. This whole place is going to go up and it can go up any day. And there's nothing on resilience. There's nothing on adaptive climate. All they're doing is taking this money. They want this infrastructure money and they're they're pushing more oil and gas, more fossil fuel, hydrogen, carbon capture, all of it. And what's going to happen when 50,000 people lose their homes and there's no water left here? And I'm I it it is very serious. And I've got all the data on it. I've got it all for all the toxin reports on the compressor stations that are inundating our communities here. And nobody listens. Nobody right. listens to this. Yeah. And it's it's they don't care about the people. It's all about their glad handing and their profits and their royalties. And that needs to be that we need to push that out in the press. So when they they come back and they don't want to do a, a good climate bill, then we go full court press. And that that's the only that's the only option we have. And we need to build that background so that we can do that, not just with this bill, but with all those good bills that are out there that the people need in this state. Yeah. That's all I want to say. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Elaine. What, what was the name of that subscription service that you mentioned at the beginning? Uh, West New Mexico Legislative Reports, and Beverly okay. Garcia was the one that did that for years. And she hired a lot of people for thirty, forty thousand a year to write and do the analysis on this. Wertheim was one of them. Um, she would hire some of the because she worked in all these. Um, uh, with all these attorneys in Santa Fe. And so she would get them to do the analysis on these um, bills. Yeah. And then that is why she was able to get really high subscription rates is because she sold that to oil and gas. Yeah. Okay. That's, thank that's what happened. Thank, thank you. you for that, Elaine. Uh, yeah, we're almost out of time. So Jeff, go ahead. Yeah, just you know, ditto on everything. I think the fact that we have a blue, a blue legislature, uh, Senate House, and a governor, this is all just proof in the pudding. We've had ideally, or on paper, you know, ideally an opportunity. All the effort that's been made by so many people, uh, you know, Paul and and Roxanne, as leaders to try to influence these Democrats and, and, you know, the, the, it's, it, 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 the bottom line is it's self-interest, it's money. And, and there's, there's a reason that we haven't been able to modernize the legislature. We're the only state, I believe, that doesn't pay legislatures, legislators. Mm -hmm. uh, so clearly the answer has to be more in a fundamental systemic way with a new approach. And, and uh, you know, the clock's ticking, particularly on climate, and we haven't got any time left or very little to make a huge difference. Yeah. And a huge difference is the, only, is the only difference we can afford to make. We can't afford to make anything less than a huge difference in that area. So, and we, we've, we've gone backwards, I guess, this, this session. So, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, we it's, didn't move forward, that's for sure. I don't know how far we moved back. We killed well, a lot of things. Well, except change can be right, right. moving forward, which puts us back automatically if we don't do anything. Right, that, that's my point, yeah. 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 Okay, thank you for that, Jeff. Thank you, everybody. It's uh, 7.01, so I think we're gonna have to end for the evening. Look for, please read the blog and the alerts um, coming up over the next few days about strategy for the remaining time. And, you know, let's try to keep, remember that some good bills did get passed. It's not enough, I know, but we did get some things done and we killed some bad bills. So I want to emphasize that we killed some very bad bills and that we have some credibility in the legislature in doing that. And then I'd also like to say that there are some really good bills that are getting through and Roxanne yeah. said it, but I think that we can learn from that 
um, because they, they're, they're doing something that we're not, or they're not encountering the kind of opposition we wind up encountering. Well, and I would add that the governor has way too much power because I think HB7 and HB4 just breeze through because she wanted them. I mean, I'm glad those are good bills, but I don't think we'll ever be able to negotiate with her on a climate bill. But we can expose her and that's the best we can yes. do. And that's not going to lower the temperature on the planet, but maybe we'll, it'll create in a context where a, a, a decent, not a decent, a very good Democratic governor runs. Yeah, we got to start thinking about who who we can get to take her place. The only person's name who I see surface is Stephanie Garcia Richard, and uh, that would seem pretty good. But okay. you know, it's it's funny you get into that kind of a position of power, and then all of a sudden you, things change, <laughs> and you thought you had somebody really good, and then you don't. But you well, got them for four years. We were never very enamored with Michelle. I would much rather have Stephanie. Oh yeah. We'll see what happens. Okay. Thanks Are for being Are we gonna meet next week? Yeah. Yes. Probably. I mean probably the following week, um, after the session's over, just to sort of do a debrief. It, debrief. Yeah. And yeah. celebrate. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. All Have right. a good evening. Have a good evening, everybody. Oh Mart somebody said Martin Heinrich. Yeah, maybe. Kind of hope. Oh, I I'm not a not Heinrich fan. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Good night.